What memories must stir this man on a sultry July night as baseball celebrates the renewal of a love affair with a 44-year-old tradition? It's a time to salute living legends. The prelude to more than a single game. It's the continuation of the mid-season pageant that looks back to a different time for us all. A time to remember through his wife, Rachel, just what a man named Jackie Robinson accomplished, not for himself alone. Honorary team captains Mays and DiMaggio reminisce and submit starting lineups to a man officiating his first all-star classic, home plate umpire Bill Kunkel. You guys don't have any rules, huh? Uh, so far, you got all the rules, huh? We've been doing it for 100 years. Hey, good luck, fellas. Good luck. Good luck. Cincinnati Reds, Rocky Anderson. The National League coaches from the Los Angeles Dodgers, their manager, Tom Lasorda. From the Philadelphia Phillies, their manager, Danny Ozar. Batting first and playing second base from the Cincinnati Reds, Joe Morgan. Batting second and playing first base from the Los Angeles Dodgers, Steve Garvey. Batting third and playing right field from the Pittsburgh Pirates, Dave Parker. Batting fourth and playing center field from the Cincinnati Reds, George Foster. Batting fifth and playing left field from the Philadelphia Phillies, Greg Luzinski. Batting sixth and playing third base from the Los Angeles Dodgers, Ron Say. Batting seventh and catching from the Cincinnati Reds, Johnny Bench. Batting eighth and playing shortstop from the Cincinnati Reds, Dave Concepcion. Batting ninth and pitching, warming up now in the bullpen from the Los Angeles Dodgers, Don Sutton. And now, here are the remaining National League All-Stars. From the Atlanta Braves, first baseman, Willie Montanez. From the Chicago Cubs, outfielder, Jerry Morales. Pitcher, Rick Russell. Second baseman, Manny Trio. From the Cincinnati Reds, Outfielder, Ken Griffey. Third baseman, Pete Rose. Pitcher, Tom Seaver. Astros, pitcher Joaquin Andujar. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, outfielder Reggie Smith. From the Montreal Expos, outfielder Ellis Valentine. From the New York Mets, 
catcher John Stern. From the Philadelphia Phillies, pitcher Steve Carlton. Third baseman Mike Smith. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, pitchers John Candelaria, Rich Gossard. From the St. Louis Cardinals, catcher Ted Simmons, shortstop Gary Templeton. From the San Diego Padres, outfielder Dave Winfield. From the San Francisco Giants, pitcher Gary Lavelle. And the trainer from the Houston Astros, Jim Ewell. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's greet the American League All-Star. The manager from the American League champion New York Yankees, Billy Martin. The American League coaches from the Chicago White Sox, their manager, Bob Lemon. From the Milwaukee Brewers, their manager, Alex Grammas. Batting first and playing first base from the Minnesota Twins, Rod Carew. Batting second and playing second base from the New York Yankees, Willie Randolph. Batting third and playing third base from the KC Royals, George Brett. Batting fourth and playing center field from the Boston Red Sox, Paul Yostrzemski. Batting fifth and playing left field from the Chicago White Sox, Richie Zisk. Batting sixth and playing right field from the New York Yankees, Reggie Jackson. Batting seventh. And catching from the Boston Red Sox, Carlton Fisk. Batting eighth and playing shortstop from the Boston Red Sox, Rick Burleson. Batting ninth and pitching, now warming up in the bullpen from the Baltimore Orioles, Jim Palmer. And now, here are the remaining American League All-Stars. From the Baltimore Orioles, outfielder Ken Singleton. From the Boston Red Sox, pitcher Bill Campbell. Outfielders Fred Lynn and Jim Rice. First baseman, George Scott. From the California Angels, pitcher, Dave LaRoche. From the Cleveland Indians, pitchers, Dennis Eckersley and Jim Kern. From the Detroit Tigers, first baseman, Jason Thompson. 
from the Milwaukee Brewers, pitcher Jim Slayton. From the Minnesota Twins, outfielder Larry Heisel. And catcher Butch Weiniger. From the New York Yankees, pitcher Sparky Lyle. Catcher Thurman Munson. Third baseman Greg Nettles. From the Oakland A's, third baseman, Wayne Gross. From the Seattle Mariners, outfielder, Rupert Jones. From the Texas Rangers, shortstop, Bert Campaneris. From the Toronto Blue Jays, outfielder, first baseman, Ron Fairley. And the trainers from the New York Yankees, Gene Monahan. From the Texas Rangers, Bill Ziegler. Ladies and gentlemen, as a special treat for all of us, We'll meet the honorary captains for tonight's All-Star Game. Representing the National League, the third leading home run hitter of all time, he's appeared in 24 All-Star Games as a player with the Giants and the Mets, the Say Hey Kid, number 24, Willie May. And representing the American League. He hit a home run in the first All-Star game at Yankee Stadium in 1939. An 11-time All-Star performer with the Yankees, a member of Baseball's Hall of Fame, the Yankee Clipper, number five, Joe DiMaggio. contributed significantly to social and political growth in this great country. We ask now that you direct your attention to the commissioner's box, Joe DiMaggio, home run champion, Henry Aaron, former Dodgers, Joe Black, Roy Campanella, and Pee Wee Reese, and honorary captain, Willie Mays. Oh, the American League. Every year, Tony, one of those stories pops up as we look at Jim Palmer, who must have warmed up for a day and a half out in that bullpen. <laughs> he said he came into today's ball game that he's a little bit tired, too. And well, Carlton Fisk, the man behind home plate, 
We asked Fisk if there are any special problems catching a pitcher he's never caught before. He's battled, of course, against. Let's hear from Fisk. Case of our starter, Jim Palmer, who is one of the best pitchers in the American League. Uh, I look for him to be probably as effective against the National League as he is against the American League, and probably uh, I'll go with the way he wants to throw a ball game. I'll let him dictate the way he wants to try to get hitters out and maybe just call his own game. We'll go over a little bit before the game starts, but he'll throw his own game out there. Now, Jim Palmer, no stranger to All-Star competition. This is his fourth All-Star game and his third start. He is yet to be scored upon. You can pretty well say that about both pitchers. Eight innings pitched, Sutton five innings pitched, three games each, unscored on. And Joe Morgan will lead it off for the National League, and I tell you, one of the sights tonight would be if a ball is hit in between any of the outfielders. With Zisk not really a gazelle in left field, Yastrzemski limping in center field, and Jackson not exactly a Gold Glove winner. That ball may be hit in between them. They'll run for a week and a half. May have to catch a cab to catch up with the ball. At any rate, Joe Morgan leads it off. Morgan is hitting 310 on the season with 12 home runs and 47 runs batted in. All-star game is underway with a high fastball and it's ball one. Inside. Carlton Fisk said that Palmer will call his own game. All Fisk has to do is remember what finger he put down. High and it's ball three. He's thrown pretty hard. Uh, he was telling us before the ball game his arm's been tired. He has the amazing total of 188 innings pitch up till this point. It's just past the halfway mark of the season. He said, My arm's been dragging. Doesn't look like it right now. There's the strike. He's popping that big mid of Carlton Fisk. Three balls and one strike. Ball game just underway. Out of play. Well, if you think that this game is going to be dripping with strategy, watch the way Fisk flashes his signs. Just like on the playground, guys. One's a fastball, two's a curve. Way back there. Jackson near the wall. One nothing. <laughs> Three two fastball. Gave the National League a quickie. Palmer has given up Joe a lot of home runs this year. Unusual for him. He's given up 20 so far this season. National League bench really going to him. Watch Reggie Jackson. Ball hit very high. Morgan ordinarily doesn't hit such towering home runs or more line drives. He got a lot of loft. <laughs> Same short porch in Yankee Stadium. Baltimore's Jim Palmer opens the proceedings against Cincinnati's Joe Morgan. Palmer coaxes the count to three and two. Morgan lines a soft slider into the right field seat. It's the first leadoff homer in all-star competition since Willie Mays took another premier Oriole pitcher, Milt Pappas, downtown 12 summers ago. Morgan not only gives the Nash to League a quick one-to-nothing lead, but makes an opening bid to repeat as the game's most valuable player, an award he won in 1972 with his game-winning hit in the 10th inning. Two and nothing to Joe Morgan. Nate Colbert at second, one out. Steve Garvey hitting at 293 on the season with 22 home runs and 80 RBIs. I'll tip he had a good cut. Joe Morgan with that home run ties Frankie Frisch, Lou Boudreaux, and Willie Mays. The most times home runs as a leadoff batter to start a game. Last time that was done was 1965. Evidently, the way he's moving by the fence, but it may be gone, and it is. That's the way the ball game starts. 
One nothing. National League leads. Out on strike. Garvey doesn't believe it. So there's one out. We'll pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KSCP TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 5. Jim Palmer has given up a home run to Joe Morgan. He struck out Steve Garvey, and here is Dave Parker, who in batting practice and infield practice had that bright yellow Pittsburgh uniform on. And he looked like a 230 pound canary running around out there. <laughs> but he can hit. Out of play. He can do a lot of things. He can run. He can throw. He can hit. He'll steal a base for you at times. The National League starting lineup is loaded with power. 142 home runs in the starting lineup for the National League. The American League just 85. American League's got him in batting average, however. Curve ball bounces. One ball and one strike. Look at all those leaders, and they're all here. Those five guys have really been seesawing back and forth for the league lead. Whoa, outside, slow curveball. It takes a lot of courage to be 60 feet, six inches from this building and throw him a slow curve. Base hit, left field. Parker is on. Joe, so before the ball game started, we show the lack of experience, the double play comics. But they have a lot of experience in the National League in the starting team. Parker's the only National League who really was not started in an all-star game. Never been in one. Well, he's off to a good start with that base hit, and it brings up George Foster. Foster hitting 316, 29 home runs, 90 runs batted in. He could go home right now and get himself a $100,000 raise. Both leading the league. 29 home runs and the 90 RBIs. In fact, it's leading the major leagues. Outside. Parker can run. But I tell you, they got Foster, Luzinski, Say, Bench, and Concepcion. Then they might think about putting a play on because you got those guys who can tear out seats for you in the bleachers. Base hit, left center field, no doubt about it. Parker's heading for third. He'll make it easily. Loses both his caps, and they're going to try to score him. Here he comes. Safe. Well, the American League was worried about their defense with Yastrzemski with a bad leg. Let's watch Parker again as he turns the corner at third. That's Brett Yellen as the start away from home. Burleson's relay for a good try by Fisk on the one-handed tag. Just not in time. Richie's hits the left field play with a bad leg. Dispensed with a very bad ankle comes up with it. Here's the relay. Well, this was a close play. Burleson almost got him on the relay throw, but he just misses the tag by sliding away. He made it for an Astro lead. Parker slices a single left to a former teammate, but now the White Sox's Richie Ziss. Then up steps Cincinnati's George Foster, the best RBI man in the game today. Palmer fires. Foster muscles the ball to left center to a perennial all-star, Boston's Carl Yastrzemski. I think they lost the play, Tony, on Yastrzemski's relay. He didn't have a whole lot on it, kind of an infield fly through to Burleson. Yastrzemski with that bad foot had to hurt him, and it's a 2-0 lead. Luzinski takes it high, ball one. This National League, they're starting out early. They've got some gunners. They've got some wreckers. Bounces away from Fisk and heading for third is Foster. It's a wild pitch. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. 
any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the commissioner of baseball is prohibited. Billy Martin not taking any chances. He has very hurriedly gotten somebody warmed up from the Cleveland Indians, Jim Kern. Two balls, no strikes on Greg Luzinski, and he is a real good cripple shooter. What a cut he had, but that was a good pitch on the outside part of the plate. Billy Martin's got his infield in, which is dangerous with a guy like this up there. Boy, well, I tell you, those married men don't like to play in with Luzinski hitting. Fouls it back out of play. He's really been on a tear. Last week, he had 15 RBIs in six games. He had a ball on a trademark in Philadelphia and hit the upper part of the facade in left field. And that's the way it looks from above. Foul out of play. Everything's upstairs that Jimmy's thrown. Breaking ball's been up high, shoulder high, fastball's been up high. When his arm's a little tired, he likes to sink that fastball. He can get the ground ball, but he hasn't done it so far tonight. Three balls, two strikes. Foul back again. With the pre-game pre ceremonies and all, Jim Palmer must feel like he's been warming up since 6.30, and now Luzinski is fouling off all these pitches. One on one. Jim Palmer has never been a big strikeout pitcher, but he's always been able to get the strikeout when he needs it. These are the kind of situations when he gets a little extra on his fastball. He just hasn't been able to do it tonight. He says the DH caused a lot of wear and tear on pitcher's arm. Pitching those tough innings, late in ball game, not being taken out. Deep to right field. Reggie Jackson going back near the wall at bye-bye. Home run. Bull. He just kept fighting pitches off, fighting him off. Let's see where that ball was. It looked like it might have been in on him. He just hung with it. He is so strong, he just muscles the ball out of the ballpark in that short right field. He's making it look like a little bandbox. You know, it's kind of like watching a redwood plant itself when the Phillies' Luzinski settles in. The three-time Cy Young winner goes again to a full count. Lozinski creams yet another slider for a towering home run to the opposite field. As the Philly strong boy lumbers in behind Foster, the capacity crowd of 56,683, most of them partial to American League fortunes, has to wonder on what meat do these giants feed. Here's Jackson once again. It's like a replay. Joe Morgan lead off home run. Mm. Hitting that canvas like a preliminary fighter. He <laughs> keeps going up against it. Here's Ron Say. I tell you, you could hit a singles in his national lineup and you'd be stopping a rally. There's the strike. Here is Ron Say with 18 home runs, 76 runs batted in. And following him is Johnny Bench, who has 20 home runs and 68 runs batted in. Fouled out of play. Billy Martin. Next to him, Alex Gramis. Not much Billy could do. Two strikes to count. Ron Say out on strikes. So it's been strike out or no count. And there is Sparky Anderson as he says, hey, Steve, take a look at the camera so the folks can see you. Steve Garvey. <laughs> the old rally stopper, he's struck out. <laughs> he's the guy who did it. <laughs> I think they were kidding him about that. <laughs> Johnny Bench, those two home runs tied a club uh, record. It's the first time a team has hit two home runs in an inning in an All-Star game. Tenth time. Bomber says, I'll try something different. A big, slow curveball of Bench. One strike. Another one. 
County bench way out in front of it. You see Bench grinning from way up here. Out on strike, so Palmer struck out the side, but a big inning. National League with two home runs, four American League coming to bat. Hey, Tony. Well, Johnny Bench, his catcher, we asked Johnny Bench the same question we asked Fisk. Anything different about catching somebody you haven't caught during the regular season? Here's Johnny Bench on Sunday. Having faced Don, I basically know what he's going to throw. I still would like to go down in the bullpen before the game, but it's a little too far from the dugout here in the Yankee Stadium in order to go down there and loosen up. I'm just going to ask him about his breaking balls, if he's going to do anything special or throw one harder or one bigger, and uh, basically let just my experience went out over the, over the rest of it. Johnny Bench talking about Don Sutton, who made a little bit of news at the luncheon the other day uh, when they were talking about Sparky Anderson. It's a tongue-in-cheek job, but I think he got the message across. He asked uh, Sparky Anderson about Sutton starting. He said, well, they're nine and a half games out in front. He deserves it. Said, Why not pitch Seaver? And Sparky starting into an answer, and, Seaver said, and uh, Sutton said, he wants Seaver fresh for Thursday. Who's he kidding? And, of course, Sparky laughed, but there might have been a grain of truth in that. But at any rate, Sutton fires a strike on Rod Carew. And it's almost a cliche, but this is baseball's purest hitter right here. One ball, one strike. Rod Say, the third baseman, up in on the grass for Carew, who can just fly and is about as good a bunter as you could have. He can lay the ball wherever he wants to. Right back to Sutton. Easy out. One out. Brings up Willie Randolph. We should get a big hand from this partisan crowd here. Although I guess those four runs that the National League has put on that scoreboard is taking a lot of the wind out of the sails for these American League fans. Four quickies. Willie Randolph. High ball one. Randolph hitting 307 at the break with four home runs, 30 runs batted in. This is Don Sutton's fourth game, and but his first start in All-Star competition. He's been unscored upon. One ball, one strike. Fouled out of play. Every time Don Sutton pitches, they accuse him of cutting the baseball. Like Sparky Anderson last time in Cincinnati was going through the whole big thing. But looking at the balls, and he said somebody's cutting them. But I tend to doubt that he'll do it tonight if he does it at all. Last uh, yesterday during the workout, Sutton went over and got a new American League ball and scuffed it up right over Lee McPhail's signature and sent it to Sparky. He said, Sparky, boy, that was a good fastball. Struck him out. Two out. He said, Sparky, look at this. It works on American League balls, too. <laughs> Get me a load of sandpaper. <laughs> Two outs. George Brett. Brett was hitting 281, four home runs, 34 runs batted in. The Kansas City Royals. Takes inside. He hit the big home run in the playoffs. It looked like it was going to do it for Kansas City. And these Yankee fans here tonight remembered it. And they booed him, but I think more out of respect than anything else. That was low. Whereas the National League sent up a load of power hitters in that first inning. We've got a bunch of singles hitters, spray hitters, all good hitters, obviously. But they all spray the ball around, don't hit for power. Take them a little while to build up four runs in the scoreboard with them coming up there. Three balls and no strikes. Ball four. George Brett draws the base on balls, and it brings up Carl Yastrzemski. He should get a great hand. He's playing with a bad leg, bad foot. You got to show a lot of respect for Yad because right up until game time, Billy Martin was trying to talk him out of play. He said, listen, you can't run. You may hurt yourself. Because I'm getting at least one at bat in. I want to play. Lines it fouled on the right field line. I think of everything I've heard and read, Yastrzemski said it best because he simply says, for one day, different guys from different teams get to pull together as a team. And that's kind of nice. 
1970 was the year he remembers. He got four hits off people like Seaver, Gaylord Perry, and Bob Gibson. The curveball hung outside. Keeps making, keeps making quotes like that. He's going to become my favorite Polish philosopher. Listen, when his name ended in I, he was your famous Polish <laughs> philosopher. <laughs> Way outside, two balls and a strike, two outs. George Brett's at first. National League is leading four to nothing. We're in the bottom of the first. Popped up. Joe Morgan, Garvey. Now Morgan taking charge. That was way up there. Major League pop fly. That ends the innings of the score at the end of one complete inning. Four nothing. National League. Uh, New York Live from our Goodyear Blimp. Over the horrors of the blackout. And maybe for a couple hours, baseball doing what it should do, take your mind off your problems. Although Jim Palmer in that first inning had some problems as the National League really jumped on him for four quick runs, although he ended up striking out the side. Dave Concepcion leads it off, followed by Don Sutton and Joe Morgan. He's up there with a count of three balls and one strike. Ball four. There's Willie Mays, and behind him, Joe Nuxhall. Still the youngest pitcher ever to pitch in the big leagues. Now a Cincinnati broadcast. He was the batting practice pitcher. Joe Morgan gets ready to be the on-deck batter, and Don Sutton with Concepcion at first base. May get a chance to bunt him over and head back to the dugout. Don swings the bat pretty well. Brett creeping in at third. Concepcion has great speed, a great base stealer. Stolen 21. Carew makes the play on Sutton. The sacrifice is executed perfectly, and Sutton now gets in out of the hot sun, so to speak. Davey gets one of the biggest leads around. He gets a bigger lead than Joe Morgan or most others. Has that good base running instinct. He was watching that ball all the way. Ball was bunted a bit in the air. He didn't want to get trapped. Morgan, who let off with a home run, is up there now. 320 home run, 55 stolen base seasons. What a player. Hit his bat. Morgan says one of his big thrills in baseball is to score a run without an official time at bat. Walk, steal second. Move the third on a bouncing ball to the right side and then a sacrifice ball. One ball, one strike. He can play, Tony. You wonder where he generates the power. Everybody knows he's not that big. He thinks and hits a lot like Ted Williams. Stands up on the plate, challenges you to throw the fastball by him inside. He doesn't have a big strike zone. Mm -hmm. He bends over. He looks down, strike zone's about the size of his belt buckle. There goes Concepcion. They got a shot to get him. They got him. No doubt about it. He had a bad jump. He was an easy out for a fine throw by Carlton Fisk. Davey doesn't get thrown out too often. Going 21 this year, cost him five. Alex Grammis was saying before the ball, he has never seen Carlton Fisk throw better than he has this year. He's healthy. If you look at the play again. Line drive right at Willie Randolph. Tom Sutton will be facing Richie Zisk, Reggie Jackson, and Carlton Fisk. Ten and four for Don Sutton. Break. The sword on the dugout steps is directing traffic, trying to get the bull and left to move over. He finally does. Strike on Zisk, who's having a tremendous year for those amazing Chicago White Sox. Boy, Bill Beck has really done a job as we look at that National League bench. There is Tom Lasorda. Two strikes on Richie Zisk. Reggie Jackson is the on deck battle. It'll be interesting to see the reaction he gets. In the pregame introductions, I thought there was a little bit of a story in the introductions. Two strike pitch to Zisk. Did he go around? Ask him. Struck him out, says Doug Harvey. The first base umpire. He said he went around. One out, and it brings up Reggie Jackson. He 
contrast to that, Billy Martin was given a tremendous hand by these fans as if they were trying to deliver a message. Jackson has been playing under a tremendous amount of pressure. I'm sure you've read all the stories as he takes a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Reggie's batting average has been going up gradually. He had that very slow start. He feels he's got the bat and everything going together now. He thinks he's going to have a great second half. He's leading the American League in doubles with 29. I tell you, that whole Yankee clubhouse, two balls and one strike. There's enough turmoil in there that if Dale Carnegie walked in, nine guys would smack him right in the mouth. He's just scratching and clawing. Trying to pitch Jackson outside. Bench keeps setting up out there. Trying to make him hit it to the big part of the ballpark. It's always been the strategy in Yankee Stadium. Puts the left-handers away, make them hit the left center field, dead center field. Another shot from the top of the stand with that handheld camera. Up the middle, that's going to get through a base hit for Reggie Jackson. It's turn a few boos in the chairs, isn't it? <laughs> that's the way to do it. When you do it with the bat and the glove, it changes in a hurry. Jackson is on, it brings up Carlton Fisk. The booze you hear, I'm sure, is an outgrowth of the friendly rivalry between Carlton Fisk and Thurman Munson. They've had a battle ever since they've been in the league. Who is the better catcher? The Red Sox fan says no doubt about it, and the Yankee fan says no doubt about it. Those of you who haven't seen Carlton Fisk this season, you might notice a real adjustment in his batting stance. Very close now. Strike one. We've mentioned this on our game of the week. This credits it to a guy named Walt Reniak, a name you haven't heard of, but he's on the coaching staff of the Red Sox. Uses a lot of the Charlie Lau theories of hitting. He's got the fist staying, keeping that shoulder in, but he can still get around on the inside fastball. Nice play by Johnny Bench as he digs a curveball out. One ball and one strike with one out. Tom Lasorda keeps moving the outfielders around on that Dodger bench. He's got a towel. Looked like a football referee to lost his game. Two balls in one strike. Is Watch he having him. fun? <laughs> Look at Pete Rose wants a little bit of time. <laughs> I think they're putting Lazinski on a little bit. He's going to come in there and pinch their head off. <laughs> two one pitch. There's his strike. Two balls and two strikes, one out. And there's the American League bench. You wouldn't have to know the score to know which team is leading. Yes, sir. National League four, American League nothing. We're in the bottom of the second. Strike three is called. Fastball on the inside corner. Third strikeout for Don Sutton. Two outs in this inning. It brings up Rick Burleson. That shot of the American League bench was interesting because Billy uh, Martin was talking to Jimmy Palmer. Burleson gets out. He's a scheduled hitter. Some activity now in the bullpen. I, I got to believe that Palmer told him, listen, if we get men on, take me out. If we want to win the ball game, put a pinch hitter up for me. Get some runs back in a hurry. Straight away center field. Foster's going back. Back, back, and makes the grab. He misjudged it for a minute. Hauled it in. That ends the second inning. So at the end of two complete innings, National League four, American League nothing. Here, blimp. blimp. That is some impressive shot. I tell you, when I fly out of New York, there's a night game going on, whether it's Shea or Yankee Stadium, just something about going over a ballpark for me, Tony. A little diamond, doesn't it? Yeah. The Goodyear blimp Mayflower flying atop as we see Steve Garvey. It'll be Garvey, Parker, and Foster. Garvey was out on strikes his first time up. You know, Jim Palmer yesterday had a good long session with Ron Fairley. He's the Toronto Blue Jays representative of the All-Star team. And he talked over every National League hitter. Fairley, of course, came over from the National League. Fairley didn't give him too good advice so far. <laughs> well, he may have given him good advice. Yeah. <laughs> one ball, one strike. It's like the fighter who blesses himself. It'll help him if he can fight. Mm-hmm. You can get a lot of information, but if you can't get that ball in the right spot, forget it. That's out of play. 
One ball, two strikes. Steve Garvey. If there was ever a ball player that played this game with a good housekeeping seal stuck on him somewhere, it's this guy. Uses a golf grip, just that top hand, the bat is just barely in his fingers, and he throws the barrel of that bat at the ball. Good power. And there's a pretty good example. It is a foul ball. You can't beat that combination up at the plate of quickness and strength. With the quickness, he can get around on that inside pitch. Watch this. Looks like he might have hung a breaking ball, a head down on the ball. Perfect example of a hitting clinic for you kids. Those arms. Oh. Both hands on the ball, and you can see the muscles pop out like Popeye in the swing. Two balls and two strikes. Palmer's curveball, he's bouncing it, hoping that Garvey would chase the bad ball. Jim Palmer. Deep to left center field. This is going way back, way back. Forget about it. Home run for Garvey. Third home run of the game. That is the longest by far. Oh, that ball really was given a ride. That is a tough part of the ballpark in Yankee Stadium. When you get to the center field side of that 387 sign, Billy Martin now out to talk to Palmer. There's Garvey, being graded by Tom Seaver, Joe Nuxall. Garvey follows instructions well. Spring training this year, his manager, Tom Lasorda, said, I want you to hit more home runs. Well, he's at 22. No question. None whatsoever. This can only watch. But Tom Lasorda is ecstatic. Before the season, he convinced Steve that he could become one of the game's long-range sluggers. Garvey has made Lasorda a prop and a believer of us all. But this 450-footer was against what might be a subpar Jim Palmer, or at least umpire Bill Kunkel thought so. I don't remember Palmer being hit that hard. I don't remember Palmer throwing the way he did. The fastball the, didn't have that extra little velocity on it. He was uh, hanging the slider. That was not the Palmer that I know. The Palmer that I know, he could put the ball where he wanted, when he wanted to. They're chuckling, it looks like. Billy's got a smile on his face. Well, they're going to break up the meeting to do something right now. Jim Kern looks like the guy is coming in from the bullpen in left center field. He's with the Cleveland Indians. Well, there's a break in the action here in Yankee Stadium with a score of the National League 5, the American League nothing. Jim, before the ball game today, what his plans were as far as managing this all-star game. They may have changed since then, Billy, but let's hear what you have to say. Well, you know, as you know, I, I really want to win this game. I think the American League has lost it uh, the last few years, and uh, we'd certainly like to win it for a change. Uh, I'm going to go with Jim Palmer to start out with, and as far as the rest of the pitching, I'm just going to wait and see what Sparky does with the moves he makes and changes out there. I plan maybe even bringing the short relievers in early, and I'd like to play the regulars as long as possible, more than three innings. Uh, I think they've been chosen by the public, and the public wants to see them just a little longer than three innings. Joe, he said he's going to wait to see what Sparky does. Sparky just sends some bombs up there. That's what he did. <laughs> is, Sparky just made out the lineup card and let those gunners go, and he can go fishing. There's no defense against those balls that Morgan hit to open the game, a home run. And then Garvey was out on strikes. Parker single. Foster drove him in from first, and then Luzinski hit a home run to right field, and it was 4-0. And here in the third, Garvey has just hit a tremendous home run. Al, Jim Kern of the Indians is on, and look at the strikeout ratio. And 57 and two-thirds inning pitch off to the All-Star break. He struck out 54. He's the one of the young flamethrowers in the American League. Here is Dave Parker, who's single to left his first time up. 6'5", 230, big oh, man. But he just threw Current it right by, it by everybody. Oh, oh, oh. Gates of oh, Ryan Duran. Oh. Carlton Fist reached for the ball when it was three feet by him. Look at this. You talk about a good fastball. Go get it. Fudge. That's this nickname. <laughs> he never did get the glove up there. One ball, no strikes. Another fastball. 
Two balls and one strike. I tell you, Fisk has got a new glove he wants to break in. He <laughs> ought to go get it. In about two innings, this kid will break it in for him. He didn't get around that one either. Foul ball. Didn't get around on it again. Mm -mm. It's late. Struck him out. Dave Parker is out on strike, so Young Kern comes in and gets his first out, a strikeout. And next week, we'll have Texas at Baltimore as we see Bert Campanaris on the left and Ken Singleton on the right, both All-Stars. And then our other game, Pete Rose, Cincinnati, and Dave Parker, Pittsburgh. Begins with grandstand at 2 o'clock. Our game of the week, Texas versus Baltimore, Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. So check your local listings. Parker takes a strike. Hi. One ball, one strike. National League, five. American League, nothing. He just blew it by him. Forget it. He's not thinking. He's throwing. And he's got a great fastball. Boy, you'd hate to see a kid like this start to spot the ball or some genius pitching coach make a 12 game winner out of him by saying well you ought to change speeds. Mm. Just blew it by him. I like to watch the expression of the hitters as they go back and tell the hitter coming from the on deck circle what he's throwing. You can tell him what but how hard you can't tell him. You can say hard but how hard is hard. He is smoking. Well, he has kind of gotten that National League bench a little bit subdued there now as we look at it. Sutton and Garvey, and he must have said something that broke nuts all up because Kern out there with two strikeouts now faces Luzinski. Oh, sawed it off in his hand. Easy out. So that ends the third inning. National League five, American League nothing. Side of the 1977 All-Star game, a packed house here. A handheld camera all over this ballpark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bill Kunkel was out talking to Don Sutton. I don't know. Every time that Sutton pitches, umpires go out to talk to him. In fact, he put a little Band-Aid on her one day, and they were going to make him peel it off. There was a message on there, ooh, you caught me. As we look at Rupert Jones of the Seattle Mariners, 17 home runs. Takes it high. Ball one. Rupert Jones, a pinch hitter. First man pick. In the expansion draft picked by the Seattle Mariners. He'll strike out a lot, but he's shown more power than they expected. High fly ball. Parker and Foster. And who made the catch? I don't know. They both got their hands up. The big man did. Dave Parker. Obviously a communication problem. They haven't played together before. Parker actually has a little more speed. <laughs> no doubt about it from that angle. George <laughs> says, all right, big guy, have it. So there's one out here is Rod Carew. Carew tapped back to the pitcher his first time up. George Foster going way back, way back, way back. Big hit way up up against Wall. That ball was almost out of here in dead center field for a man who's known as a spray hitter, Rod Carew. Rodney hits this ball some 420, 25 feet. Look at Foster at the warning track. Look for the wall. Is it going to go out? It might have had a chance for a home run by Carew, but he robbed him of it. Nice play. Here's another angle. Foster's got a beat on it. Now he looks for the wall. And that warning track will tell him he's close. He's a left fielder by trade, but he played the outfield right then in center like he'd been out there all his life, Joe. That would have been close. It sure would have, Tony. Oh. Good play by Foster. Here is Randolph. Takes it inside. Ball one. So, National League flashing some leather. They flashed a lot of lumber. It's five to nothing. We're in the bottom of the third. There's the strike. One ball, one strike, two outs. Nobody on. Great play by George Foster. May have chased the bad ball. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, says Kunkel. You heard that. They never say strike. Ah, I don't know why it hurt him. Randolph was out on strike. Don Sutton.
after 186 career wins, stretched his unblemished all-star record to a Palmer-sized eight inning. Only a single and a walk marred an otherwise flawless first three frames. As a kid, he dreamed of pitching in Yankee Stadium, so it wasn't surprising that his adrenaline was really pumping. It certainly began with a challenge against the Twins' ever-dangerous Rod Carew. But Sutton grabbed the five-time batting champ's harmless comebacker and threw him out easily. They say that when you've got it, flaunt it. Four went down on strike. Even the Bates wouldn't intervene as Rupert Jones of the Mariners discovers when Foster and Parker play, I've got it, before Parker plucks the ball almost out of Foster's glove. But this man can sting you even when you're at your best. And Rod Carew proves it in the third. He drives Foster to the 417 foot mark for an outstanding catch. Proving that not only can the National League home run leader hit them out, but he can keep the ball in the park as well. Two out. Bottom of the third, the Yankees' Willie Randolph digs in. Bill Kunkel is impressed. Would he have you thinking about throwing the sinker low and away? He'd jam you with the fastball, or he'd throw the slider into the left-handed hitters, and he just mixed his pitches excellent. For this year's All-Star Game program, now this handsome book contains a history of previous All-Star Games, today's players, and a special feature this year on the great Jackie Robinson. And as you well know, this year's game is dedicated to him. Now, for your copy, send a check or a money order for $2.50, plus 50 cents for our postage and handling. Send to All-Star Souvenir Program, Post Office Box 350, New York, New York, 10046. The preceding message was presented by Major League Baseball. We've got a new pitcher, Dennis Eckersley. Another one of those guys who throws very hard of the Cleveland Indians. You always look at the strikeout ratio to innings pitched. You see Eckersley from every angle you can imagine. And if need be, we may show you one from right directly above from the blimp. But he has struck out in 155 in the third innings, 119. He's got a funny motion, Joe. I think that bottom panel on your right-hand side is the one that the, pit, the hitters hate when he comes sidearm. Watch that left leg. He hides that ball. He gets that leg up high. His glove and the ball are below his leg, and then he comes from third base. Looks like from behind the third base coach. That'll make a broadcaster out a lot of right-hand hitters, I'll tell you. If you're hitting against a guy like him, it's disconcerting because when he toes the rubber, it's ready to take his sign. He's actually looking toward third base, or he's facing that way. I love these conversations. One's a fastball. Now two's a curve. Now I don't throw a knuckleball. I don't have a fork ball. And three's a slider. I might change up on my fastball. Okay. There's a shot of the stands as a <laughs> Yankee fans. They, they're ready. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> Ron Say was out on strikes his first time up is up there and watch Eckersley come from around third base. Strike one. Eckersley's first all-star game. He's the man who this year pitched the no-hitter against California. Take our play of the week which comes to you this week from Cleveland. A modest crowd of 13,000 came out to see the Indians play the Angels last Monday night and they saw a treat of a lifetime. A no hitter by Cleveland's 22 year old Dennis Eckersley. The score was tight, one to nothing. The tension hung on each pitch. Baseball can't get much better than this, but the beauty is that it can happen anytime. Strike three. It's a no hitter. How about that? See you next week, folks. Whoops, he bailed out. Randolph has an easy out. Ron Say is out Randolph to Carew. Here from our left field camera, Say has been in a terrific slump the last couple of weeks. The regular season. <laughs> the old waddler. 
the Penguin. <laughs> Here is Johnny Bench. This is a good shot. Bench a long way from the plate. No way if he comes sidearm will he hit that ball on the outside part of the plate. Pops it up. George Brett at third base taking charge. Two outs. Joe Cronin, who has only missed one All-Star game, 1942, as either a player or as a spectator. He has seen it there as a playing manager, shortstop with Washington, manager with the Red Sox, president of the American League. He has seen them all except one. Wonderful man. Concepcion, strike one. I don't blame him. Oh, by that swing, he didn't like Eckersley at all. With that high leg kick, he goes to the all-star break as a hot hitter, but the way Eckersley's throwing is going to be tough. One ball and one strike. Palmer started. Kern came on. Now Eckersley for the American League. Good strike. One ball, two strikes. Concepcion should get on. Reggie Smith will be the pinch hitter. He won't get on. Eckersley, easy out. Three up, three down. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. National League, five. American League, nothing. As we see a shot of the Bronx from our Goodyear blimp, a hot muggy night here in New York. We've got some changes. The new pitcher, Laval. Now you see Winfield. He has gone in to play left field, replacing Luzinski. Ted Simmons is the catcher. Winfield from San Diego. Simmons from St. Louis. Laval is the new pitcher from the San Francisco Giants. Laval is first All-Star game. Very impressive earned run average, as you see. That is second best in the National League to Bruce Souter. He's just over one run allowed per game. Souter came up with that knot in his right shoulder. The sensational first half for the Cubs. He's kept them in that race. And he couldn't make it. Laval will be uh, facing threat. Yastrzemski and Richie Zisk. Winfield bats in the fifth spot. Simmons bats in the ninth spot. Laval will bat seven. George Brett walked his first time up. I ball one. There you see the governor, the gentleman in the blue tie. Big sports fan, Governor Hugh Carey of New York. Fly ball, left field, Winfield going back. Makes the play easily. Boy, he's another big guy. I'll tell you something. Before the game, he and that Dave Parker were running in the outfield together. It looked like a tag team match looking for some arena somewhere. Yastrzemski. Pop to the second baseman his first time up. Outside, ball one. Let's pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KSCP TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 5. That's the strike. Laval, a pretty good strikeout pitcher in his own right. He's come up with 13 saves for the Giants. He thinks one thing's important in relief, and that's come in and throw a strike if you can on the first pitch. Get ahead of the hitter with something on the ball. One ball, two strikes. Richie Zisk, the on-deck batter. Stremski, a high fastball out on strikes. First strikeout for Laval. That's the fifth strikeout for the National League pitchers. Now, Richie Zisk. It's a big thrill for him being voted by the fans. His first year in the American League. We asked him about playing in New York, the All-Star game. 
Well, as a child, I used to come to many, many Yankee ball games and got caught up in the, the tradition and the excitement of Yankee baseball back in the early 60s. And when you got a chance to play in an All-Star game, no matter where it is, it's a big thrill. But coming back to Yankee Stadium, where I watch so many games, uh, magnifies it that much more. Well, he gets a base hit up the middle, Richie Zisk, and it brings up Reggie Jackson. Bob Levin, the first base coach. Jackson single to center field his first time up. National League five, American League nothing. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Two outs. Ball one. Well, since the two Cleveland pitchers came in, Eckersley and Kern, and now Laval, the hitters have been a little bit over that. Pitchers blowing the ball by some of them. Outside, two balls and no strikes. Two balls in one strike. The one thing that he does that's very distracting is as he starts his delivery, he looks a little bit towards first base and then starts towards the plate with his arm. You like to see that head looking at you. Take two. Two balls and two strikes. Struck him out. That ends the inning, so at the end of four complete innings, it's National League five, American League nothing. Well, we've got some changes here in this 1977 All-Star Game for the American League as we zoom right in. The man in center field, Fred Lynn, from the Boston Red Sox. He's loosening up with a teammate who's going into play right field, Jim Rice. So Rice replaces uh, Reggie Jackson, and Lynn replaces Yastrzemski. Ted Simmons, who came on to replace Johnny Bench, will lead it off for the National League. Dennis Eckersley, 11 strikeouts in the game so far. It'll be Simmons, Morgan, and then Garvey. Well, Jim Palmer got hit hard. One hopper, Willie Randolph. We'll get Simmons, one down. Bring up Joe Morgan, who led off this ball game with a home run. Changed up, hit deep to right center field. Lynn to the warning track. Great running catch by Freddie Lynn. Arrived Joe Morgan of an extra base hit. Ah, we've seen Freddie do that time in and time out. Here he goes again. Fred Lynn, who is so good at knowing exactly where he is, now uses that wall to great advantage. Here's another angle on it, and he's got a beat on that ball early. Great lesson for the young ball player. It's a great outfield to play center fielder because it's so big, and you don't have to worry too much about fences. You can just keep on loping after the ball. We'll bring up Garvey with two outs. Good sweeping curveball, one strike. Foul out of play. That's Bill Kunkel whipping the ball back to Eckersley, a former American League pitcher. He played in this ballpark and pitched in it for the Yankees. Well, he just busted it by him inside. So Eckersley with another easy inning for the American League. will go to the last of the fifth. It's National Five, the American League, nothing. Clark, first time since he was traded. He's warming up. Strange in a Cincinnati uniform, but he's warming up for the National League. Willie Montanez of the Atlanta Braves has gone in to play first base, replacing Steve Garvey, hitting in the number two spot. Lavelle's first pitch to Fisk. Boy, and I don't One know. Ball. I don't know who hasn't seen him, Tony, but that Montanez is a treat with that glove. He really flips that ball around. I love to watch him play. He puts on a show. Fouled off out of play. One ball, one strike. He threw him a slider, and Fisk pops it up. Concepcion. The first out. One ball, one strike, with one out on Rick Burleson. Ground ball over the head of Laval, but Davey Concepcio with that great range takes a hit away. He just glides over. He covers a lot of ground. He really does, boy. What you need on an infield is an eraser. You make a bad pitch, you need somebody to erase it. Look at him just glide over there and just 
Routine ground ball, easy play. Well, Venezuela seems to produce a lot of oil. There's Matrigues giving it a little act. Venezuela with a lot of oil, but also some shortstops. Carascal, <laughs> Aparicio, and Concepcion. Larry Heisong leading the American League in RBIs with 82. Munson is second with just 68. He's going to be the pinch hitter for Eckersley, the pitcher. He is strong. He hits best when he hits left center, right center field. Didn't look like he reached that one. He, a tailing he, fastball no. from Lavelle, tailing away. From the center field angle, you can see how far he is away from the plate. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. For the last to the fifth, the American League trails five to nothing. Gary Lavelle of the Giants. He really jammed him. Hit him on the fist. Dave Parker gliding in. He's got it. Three up, three down after five here in Yankee Stadium. The score, five to nothing. The National over the American League. Cleveland's Jim Kern had already tidied things up in the third after Palmer's rude departure. And his teammate, Dennis Eckersley, does as well through the fourth and fifth. But the Giants' Gary Lavelle matches him with two scoreless innings of his own for the National League. So it's still 5-0 as they prepare for the sixth. Yes, All right, we're back in Yankee Stadium, the site of the All-Star Game of 1977. Bert Campanaris, the new shortstop. The Texas Rangers, there's the new catcher for the Minnesota Twins. The youngster, Butch Weiniger, the switch hitter. And a new pitcher, Dave LaRoche of the California Angels. He started the year with the Cleveland Indians. He was on the American League All-Star squad last year, but he didn't pitch. Yeah. Drill, Campanaris to his left. And the first base, he gets Dave Parker. Hit hard, but a good play by Campy. Bring up George Foster, hitting in the cleanup spot for the National League All-Star team. And one of the defensive highlights of this ball game so far came in the third inning when he went way back to the center field wall and robbed Rod Carew of a possible home run. George Foster. What a fantastic RBI season he's having so far. One ball to George Foster. Last year, about the middle of August, George Foster tailed off quite a bit, but he said, it's not going to happen to me this year. I'm putting the first half of the season behind me. It's a whole new year. Whoa. Whoa. Throws it right by him. That got Conco. That got Conco. That's one of those real cavity rattlers. <laughs> Right off Kunkel's chest protector and mask. He's taking a little bit of time back there. There you see him. Hopper foul. Tommy Lasorda. He's got his Dodger ball club way ahead of Cincinnati. <laughs> the Western Division National League. Mr. Positive. Nine and a half game lead. I wonder if he thinks that's comfortable. <laughs> Head off the fist, Brett in the foul territory. Quick goes there to Carew, two out. Long throw, good play by Brett. He really balanced himself and gunned it. Watch him set himself. He didn't hurry it at all. He gets ready and he just guns it. Rod Carew, a product of a very famous high school, Washington High. Dr. Henry Kissinger came from there. Our producer, Roy Hammerman. <laughs> Gotta get Roy's plug in, don't we? <laughs> Dave Winfield. One of the strong young giants was drafted in three professional sports. Basketball, football, and obviously baseball. One ball, no strikes. 2-0. The man behind the plate, the Minnesota Twins, the switch hitter, Butch Weiniger, became the youngest player ever to play in an All-Star game last year. This year, Templeton of the National League squad, the youngest man on either club. Boy, did he have a cut? <laughs> a 
That's one of the better kept secrets that he's second in the National League in runs and hits 114. One of the reasons being he himself says at San Diego he never makes the box scores in the Eastern papers. So I really one of those guys could go on what's my line and stump the panel. He can run. He can throw. He obviously can hit with power. And he signed a contract a short while ago and he looks like he's going to be a happy ball player. The Roach is three and two pitch again to Winfield. Hit to right field. Sound like his bat broke, but he drives Rice back to the wall. He dropped the ball as he bumped the wall. Winfield Husky goes into second base. That bat sounded like it shattered and carried to the wall, Joe. That's when you're strong. Looked like Rice had it all away plenty of time. Should have caught that ball. Hit the heel of the glove, and it was jarred loose as he backed into the wall. They give him a base hit, but I tell you, if Christmas comes early, that ball should have been caught. No way. No way what? Caught or hit? It's got to be there. I agree with you. Oh, him. yeah. <laughs> they give him a hit. He should have caught that ball. Well, the official scores this ball game, the Cincinnati Post, and president of the Baseball Writers Association, Earl Lawson, Red Foley of the New York Daily News, and Ken Negro of the Baltimore Morning Sun. To bring up, say, in Winfield in scoring position, Two outs, National League leads, five to nothing, we're in the sixth. Good fastball. Inside and low, a ball and a strike. Winfield on second base, one and one count. Two and one. Goes three and one on, say. He walked him. We'll bring up the pinch hitter, Pete Rose. And Pete Rose, having a lot of fun in the workout yesterday, brought his son, Pete Jr., as we listen to the crowd reaction. Now let's hear Pete Rose interview a little Pete Jr. What did you think of those monuments out in center field? I like seeing all them great Yankee players. And Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, pitchers of all of them, they were great players, weren't they? Yes. How do you like the stadium? I like it. Is this where we won a World Series? Yeah. Pete Rose and Pete Jr., he's a pinch hitter, batting right-handed against LaRoche. The National League squad with four switch hitters. Gives Sparky a little maneuverability. Winfield on second, say on first with two down. He goes after the first pitch at the high to right field. Jimmy Rice. Whoa, he had a little trouble, but he gets it. Bill Kunkel gets a cram course in National League names from manager Sparky Anderson. Tempo, T-E-M-P-L-E-T-O-N. Okay. And then Jimmy Rice on the second pitch. An old nemesis, but now a most comforting sight indeed to Sparky is the man who is a franchise for a generation of Met fans. Back in New York, but now wearing Cincinnati red, 32-year-old George Thomas Seaver enters stage left. It was during the pregame introduction that these New York fans poured out their love for the man, not the uniform. they had roared like a reunion with their own fondest memory like something they cherished and would never relinquish no matter what the uniform Tom Seaver has come on he stirred up the crowd before the ball game during the player introduction with standing ovations he stirred him up again as he came in from the bullpen he's on for the National League Tom Seaver his first appearance back in New York since he was traded from the Mets, went over to Cincinnati. Some other changes now. In center field for the National League, Jerry Morales. In right field for the Montreal Expos is Alice Valentine. Pete Rose stays in the ball game at third base. And the youngster from the St. Louis Cardinals, Gary Templeton, is now playing shortstop. So Seaver, with a 5-0 lead, will pitch to Peru, Randolph, and George Fleck. There's the introduction for Seaver. And there's Rod Carew and that trophy presented by the commissioner's office and Gillette for the man who received more votes than anybody else in this all-star game, over four million. 
Peru, 0 for 2, grounded out, sent George Foster deep. He may have been robbed of a home run. Brill up the middle, base hit by Peru. First pitch off Seaver. Jerry Morales in center field. It's worth the admission to come and watch Arad Carew swing the bat. And to be behind the plate and see the, what he does with a ball, it's like he was on the mound putting the ball where he wants to hit it. He has tremendous command. Carew gives Seaver his baptism on the first pitch, and the American League had its third hit. We'll bring up Willie Randolph. He struck out two times. Seaver's seventh appearance. He was on the squad three other times, but he didn't pitch. Drill right back at Seaver. Smacks it down. He'll get it off the first base, and that was just self-defense. Falling right back at Tom Seaver's face. He knocks it to the ground. Carew goes to second. Wow. Sparky's coming out. Jimmy Ewell, the trainer's coming out. Here's a shot of it. Watch the follow through by Seaver. It's a good study for the young pitcher how he's balanced and ready for that ball. And good thing he was. He knocks it down and still able to make the play. He was just perfectly balanced. Randolph cranks the ball off Seaver's left wrist. But it's still thrown out. A second look shows why Seaver is among the finest fielders at his position as well as a premier pitcher. Two pitches, two smashes up the middle. Tom didn't shook up now, but you got to believe he was shook up when he saw it coming back at him. So with crew out second, one out, National League leading five to nothing. George Brett, who led the American League in hitting last year, his average has been down this year, but he's been hurt. One strike. Tony, uh, Carew at second base, that's really strange country. That's the first American leaguer to get to second base in this ball game. He got just three hits off the end of the bat. Rose, Montagnese, <laughs> two outs. You got to enjoy watching him play. Montagnese, there's Carew and Joe Morgan. Second base umpire Davey Phillips of the American League. Brings up Freddie Lynn. One in for Kyle Yastrzemski. One ball. Two balls, no strikes on Fred Lynn. Fouled out of play. Seaver throws it right by him, two and two. Hit high in the air, the third baseline. Rolls in foul territory. Templeton over. Look out, Pete. He hit that tarpaulin. Tripped over it. The ball came down. He might have had a play. He was on his way down. Look at Templeton over to help. Rose got a beat on it. That ball hit him on the head. That ball it? hit him. That right ball on the hit him. Top of the head. Here it is again. There he hits the tarpaulin. No, I wow. missed him. Just barely wow. missed him. Luckily. Then Boston's Fred Lynn pops up the rose, and it looks like Seaver has escaped. Oop. Charlie Hustle slipped somewhere between the roll tarp and a hard place. American League hopes flicker once again. One of the many endless fascinations of baseball, unique in American team sports, is that you can't be beaten by the clock. No situation is ever beyond redemption. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Freddie Lynn facing Tom Seaver with two on second. Good curveball. He fouls it off. There's Rod Carew. Magazine articles, picture cover stories. The biggest vote getter in this year's All-Star game for a man who a lot of people said is somewhat of an unknown Minnesota, except for Minnesota. He's got a lot of publicity. Seaver thought he had it. The count goes to three and two. I love Carew's theory on chewing, too, Tony. He said he makes his skin tight so don't squinch his eye. Helps him hit. <laughs> Seaver loses Freddie Lynch, and the American League has runners on first and second with two outs, and Richie Ziss, the hitter. Base hit right center field for the American League will score first one of the ballgame as Carew scores. Lynn made 
tried. He's been waved on by Travis. Disc in the second base. Lynch scores. It's now five to two. The American League bench. The first thing they've had to cheer about so far today. Richie says he's made a good living in the National League driving in runs. He's done it this year so far in the American League, and he keeps on doing it in the All-Star game. You can't seem to make a mistake with this because he's that strong that he can wait until the last possible second, and he'll muscle. The muscle the ball. The pitch was a way that he hit the ball to the right center field. That's got Jerry Morales runs down this screamer off the wall, but he can't keep the roof from scoring. Nor Lynn right behind him. And with one potent swing of the bat, Chicago's Richie Ziss makes it a whole new ball game. Bring up Jimmy Rice with two down. He hits him on the fist, hopped up in foul territory. Simmons over, he lost the ball for a second, but he waves Montagnier's off. And he gets it for the third off. The American League comes up with two. We'll go to the seventh. Changes in that American League defense. There he's Kenny Singleton. He's going in to play right field. Jimmy Rice, who was the right fielder, has moved to left field. George Scott is at first base. The boomer. And Greg Nettles is going in to play third base. And we've got a new pitcher, Bill Campbell. Five to two, we're in the seventh inning. Valentine will lead it off. This is his first time at bat from the Montreal Expos. Bill Campbell won 17 ball games for the Twins last year. He played out his option. He has 17 saves for the Red Sox this year. Tops the American League. Alice Valentine. One of the fine young outfielders that Montreal team has. Along with Andre Dawson, Warren Cromarty. It's the outfield of the future. Really the outfield of the present. They're playing well now. Two balls and no strikes. And when you talk about somebody coming sidearm, Mr. Campbellton wheels and deals from the side. Misses. Three balls and no strikes. Well, he walks Valentine, so Valentine draws the base on balls. Simmons, a Cardinal RBI leader in each of the last five seasons. There goes Valentine. Nice. nice play by Randolph. Willie Randolph. Nice play. Got Simmons at first, but Valentine going with the pitch ends at second. We've seen some good defensive plays here. Randolph just pulled one off. That's a first and third situation for the National League if Willie doesn't come up with that ball. So there's one man out, and Joe Morgan is the batter. He was going for one. Two strikes to count on Joe Morgan. Struck him out. He turned it over. A screw ball took a little bit off. Morgan was out in front. A strikeout for Bill Campbell. There are two away. And it brings up Willie Montanez. Kid Montanez about being a hot dog. He said, oh, no. Not number one. Fuentes is number one. Wentz says and Montanez is number one. They can both play. Good swing. <laughs> Watch him with that bat. He dropped it that time. He handles it like a baton. One one pitch. Fouled out of play. Bill Campbell strikeout that ends the inning. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. National League five, American League two. Manny Trio has gone into play second base for the National League as Sparky Anderson continues to get the players in the lineup. They were voted in, and he's going to get them in. Butch Weiniger will lead it off for the American League. Bouncing ball. Sneaks through for a base hit. Weininger is on. So the American League got something going here in the bottom of the seventh inning. 
a leadoff single by Weininger. It's a five to two ball game. Nash League out in front. Weininger checking signs with Bob Lemon. And Minnesota's Butch Weininger leads off the bottom of the seventh with a bleeder in the hole between first and second. Everybody sits up and takes notice. Bert Campanaris is the batter. Only one thing Bob Levitt could be telling Weininger, hey, we're down, don't get picked off. Watch the line drive, make it go through. Montanez is playing behind Weininger. Strike one. Campanaris tried to hit that ball to right field. That's the view Weininger has. This crowd tries to stir it up. A partisan American League crowd, and they trail by three. Strike two. Outside, just barely missed. One ball and two strikes to count. Campanera six times had 50 or more stolen bases. Struck him out. Foul tip held on to by Simmons to strike out, and it brings up Greg Nettles. He'll get a tremendous hand. Runs, 58 runs batted in. He leads the American, he led the American League in home runs last year. 32. Blue ball one. Foul out of play. Ball in a strike. Kunkel took another one off the mask. He's checking him, boy. He got a good one that time. When that umpire takes the mask off, he's talking to himself. I don't know how you feel, Bill, but Joe Garagiola knows how you feel. You've had a couple of those jolts. Look at it again. I tell you, you want to find oh, out. Oh, it spun it around. What it, what it feels like is putting your head in a bell and somebody hitting it with a hammer. Okay. One ball, two strikes. That could be. Oh, he booted it. Everybody's safe. Should have been a double play. That ball off the end of the bat on. Greg Nettles had a lot of English. Templeton has made quite a few errors in his first year in the National League, first full year. This one had that little bit of English, a little bit of spin, rolls right up his arm. Could have been two, but now the American League's got something going. Both Bill Kunkel and Yankee fans know that last year's American League's home run champ, Greg Nettles, can make it a one-run ball game in a hurry. And Seaver's luck all bad continues as St. Louis's Gary Templeton boots a perfect double play ball. Here it is, another angle. He might have been thinking about taking it himself. Might have taken his eye off the ball. May have just taken a bad half. The ball just beat him. So instead of an inning-ending double play, the tying run is at the plate. And Tony, as you said in the pregame, if you're looking for a guy to hit your home run, you would take George Scott. Here he is in that very spot right here. He swings, and did he ever have a home run cut at that one? Oh, baby, he unloosed one. Leading the American League with those 25 home runs. Jimmy Rice is in the ball, and he's next. Outside, one ball, one strike. If nothing else, George Scott is loose. That first one, man, he really popped a few buttons. He's going to give you a thrill with that bat in his hand. Popped up, short center field. Morales has to come hard. He's there, makes the play. Oh, oh. saw a little bit of white on that one. I tell you, he catches oh, that ball like oh. that most of the time below the belt, and he gives you a thrill. He's playing deep in this Yankee Stadium outfield. Watch this. The old Roberto Clemente catch. Look at the white down to the edge of the webbing like an ice cream cone. <laughs> So there are two away, and here's Willie Randolph. Randolph struck out in the first, struck out in the third, and smashed one back to Seaver, who was able to knock it down and throw him out at first in the sixth. Straight away center field, Morales is coming in, he can't get it. A run will score at five to three. Both 
offense going for both clubs. We're going to have a pinch hitter, Joe. Ron Fairley has come out of the American League dugout. He'll be the pinch hitter for the pitcher, Campbell, who was batting in the third spot. And the tying runs are on. Nettles is on at second base. Randolph is on at first, and Ron Fairley, the batter, two men out, five to three, National League leading. He's been on some National League All-Star teams. His first year like this for the American League. He's picked by Martin. Foul ball. Montanez near the stands, but he won't get it. Two fairly, strikes. Excuse me, Joe. Fairly knows Seaver. He's battled against him an awful lot of times in his National League career. But I got to believe when it's a Tom Seaver out there that he's got the advantage. Fairly's first all-star bat. He's on the National League team in 73, but only played first base. Outside. Missed outside. Two balls and two strikes. And here's the pitch to Seaver. He has to make it happen right here. He got two quick strikes. And he nibbled on the corner. And now he's set up either way to go outside or jam him. This is his pitch of decision right here. He's got to make it happen. Foul ball. He really drilled it. That was a home run all the way. Barely got out in front. Right now you've seen that classic confrontation. The good hitter. He's not going to scare up there against the good pitcher. Seaver went with a breaking ball. He hung it up and a little bit inside. Barely pulled the trigger a little bit too soon. I'm going to believe Tommy's going to go back outside with him now. They're going to the big part of the ballpark. 2-2 two, two pitch. 3-2. Three and two. And now with two outs, everybody's running. And Willie Randolph can score the time run on a long single. He's at first base. Greg Nettles, he'll be off and running at second base. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, five to three, National League leading. Struck him out. Tom Seaver gets the strikeout. That ends the seventh inning, so the score at the end of seven complete innings. The Toronto Blue Jays old reliable Ron Fairley. The 20-year former National League veteran puts one deep. A foul. Power just misses against power. He had a 3-2 pitch. He wouldn't want to walk him, but he knew what he was doing. He started that fastball on the outside corner, and by the time Fairley's bat stopped, he knew the ball was about a foot outside. When the chips got down, and he knew he was in trouble, then this Tom Seaver came out. As we see Sparky Lyle, a new pitcher, talking it over with Butch Weininger. Sparky with that chew, he looks like he's deformed. <laughs> Lyle pitched in the 1973 All-Star game. He's on squad in 76, did not get in. He's been the ace out of the Yankee bullpen for a number of years. The New York Yankees, who used to be great but haven't looked great for a long time, are looking great again. There is general agreement that one man, more than any other, is responsible. He's the Sabre, a relief pitcher who has saved 28 games and the Yankees climbed to second place. He is, of course, Sparky Lyle. Lem Tucker tells about him. To call 28-year-old left-handed reliever Sparky Lyle just a pitcher is like calling Howard Johnson just an ice cream man, for Sparky is the acknowledged master of the saved game. For Sabres, the thrill is coming in when the old team is in a tough spot and pulling the game out. And that Sparky does better than probably any other relief pitcher in history. And he's philosophical about it. I don't really think about the pressure. You know, I, my theory on that is uh, when I go into a ball game, I'm coming out one or two ways, winning or losing. I just feel better when it's tighter. I think I bear down more and I, you know, I, I think I get out of tough situations a lot better than if I come in with one man on and may I might give up a hit or something, you know, and then then all of a sudden I find myself in a tight spot and I come back here and I swear in myself for about 10 seconds and go out there and throw again, you know, and I I pitch some of my best games under the worst kind of pressures you can have. And I, I don't know, I'm not saying that's the only way I can pitch, but to this date, that's the best way I pitch. <laughs> my theory on short relief and pitching is to attack the hitter and this is what I try and do. 
you've got to have something that you can get over all the time and you've got to have uh, some type of out pitch all the time, which I use a slider. A slider is my out pitch. Whatever his pitch, Arky is largely responsible for the amazing fact that the Yankees, you may have thought they went out of existence back in the 60s, are seriously fighting for the pennant in their division. And amid all the attention Sparky and his son received at a recent father-son game, there were probably lots of Yankee fans who just hoped that in a few years they'd get to see a chip off the old Sparky. Lem Tucker, ABC News, New York. Sparky Lyle, he'll be facing Templeton, Morales, and Winfield. Gary Templeton, boy, you looking, you're looking at a kid who has got superstars stamped all over him. Sparky got a little criticism from some areas of the country for picking Templeton to the squad over Larry Bowe, who's, well, he's just been a sensational shortstop, Boa. And I'm sure Sparky uh, would like to have picked all three of them, Concepcion, Templeton, and Boa, but he went with the kid, Templeton. Strike one on Gary Templeton. Well, Sparky handled it well. He said, I don't blame Bo. I like those kind of guys. When they're not picked, they complain. All-star means a lot. Money goes to the pension plan. It helps and all the ball players. Time is called. One of the players been running in from the bullpen. Rick Russell, Rick Russell. the Cubs pitcher. He and Suter have been that franchise. Mm. Templeton, the youngest player in either squad. Base hit. No way they're going to get him. And he makes a big turn. He He's going to try it. They got a shot. They won't get him. I tell you, he can do it all. He didn't hesitate. Danny Ozark had the green light going, but there was no way he could help him. He made up his mind. Watch it. Well, how'd you like to be 21, a switch hitter, hitting well over 300, be able to do what he just did? He made that double not from first to second, but right from out of the batter's box, home plate. We started taking those long strides. He was moving. Rice was playing deep in the left center field. He didn't lope on the ball. He came charging it. He simply outran it. Here is Morales. Look out. That hit him. Look out. Look out. That hit him hard. Morales is on, hit by a pitch ball. That's that hard slider that Sparky Lyle throws. He may have tried to overthrow it. Jimmy Ewell, the Houston Astros trainer. Well, Herman Franks, the manager of the Cubs, who's got them in first place in the Eastern Division, is sitting somewhere worrying about that. He's already got Suter with that sore shoulder, missing the All-Star game, and he got cracked pretty good. Looked like on the knee. That man right there, Danny Ozark, has got the Phillies creeping up on Herman Franks. Oh, it's going to be a good second half, I'll mm -hmm. tell you. Interesting to see the guys that are leading can make a little story. Joe Jr. and I were talking about it today. Herman Franks said, oh, he'll never identify with the players. <laughs> Lasorda is a big cheerleader. Bob Lemon at the White Sox. There's the strike. <laughs> Reggie Smith, there you see me, is the on-deck batter. Slider gets by the catcher, Weininger, and Templeton, a big turn. Better be careful. Both runners advance. Well, you can see what that speed will do. Templeton with a big lead off second base. It's charged a wild pitch to Sparky. He had that big lead, was jockeying back and forth. Lyle may have been worried about him too much. Over overthrew a pitch. Now they're in second and third. Here's how part of this inning got started with Templeton down at second base after he hustled out a double. Lyle slide right on the knee. Of Jerry Morales made it first and second. Wild pitch made it second and third. Base hit to the pulled in infield. One run scores. Here comes Morales. Throw goes in the second. Two run score. It's seven to three. Morales didn't run like his leg was bothering him at all. So Reggie Smith will come on. Winfield is on at first base. National League is added to their lead at 7 to 3. Now you said it before it happened. When that infield comes in, the big strong guy like Winfield, you're in trouble because he just hit the ball in the fist and muscled it through. Now the pinch hitter. Reggie Smith of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. 
It's a strike. Jeff Feeney, National League president, and the man on the far side, Warren Giles. For many years, the president. Base hit, left field, Reggie Smith. Winfield, big turnaround second, but holds on. Sparky Lyle being treated just a bit rough here. Smith really limping on that bad leg. Sparky's yelling out from the dugout, asking if Smith needs some help as a pinch runner. Then he went on to Smith, waved his uh, head no, he said. Sparky said, but take it easy. Pete Rose. Rose flied out his first time up. That was in the sixth inning. Out of play, strike one. Nobody out. Base runners at first and second. Two runs are in. Sparky wants, Anderson, yeah. he wants a pinch runner. He's going to run somebody. Mike Schmidt. He wants him out of there. Schmidt on that bad leg. You see him limp off badly. He's been playing with that pretty much of the season. National League bench, Sparky Anderson makes a move here. Mike Schmidt has gone in to run. Schmidt, who has the bad hand, came to the All-Star game with this in mind that he could be used as a pinch runner. Bouncing ball, Randolph steps on second. The first is in time. Beautiful play by George Scott. George Scott with that glove that it seems like he's had for 100 years, Tony, a backhanded play, a good play, double play. That black beauty goes on and on, doesn't it? Off balance throw by Willie Randolph, the hard sliding Schmidt. You got an idea of Schmidt's speed. Look at the scoop by George Scott. So there are two away. Winfield moves on over to third. Valentine is the batter. Valentine walked his first time up. Well hit. Center field. Lynn is going back. He's got room. Makes the play. That ends the inning. National League picks up two runs. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. The concerto finally ends as the Expos' Ellis Valentine flies out to the Red Sox's ever graceful Fred Lynn in center. And he'll be facing Fred Lynn. Outside, ball one. If you saw our game of the week last Saturday from Philadelphia, you see, saw Russell with a 6 nothing lead. Off the handle should be an easy play for Trio. One out. And Russell got hurt badly by the Phillies, but they never got a ball in the infield. At artificial service, they were bounding over everybody's head, and this is what he likes to pitch on grass. He is 12-3, and three, Russell. Carlton leads the National League with 13-4. Rick Russell. And run average 2.43. Kenny Singleton. There's a strike. National League. Seven, the American League three. We're in the bottom of the eight. Bounces off Simmons. One ball and one strike. Quite a story about Kenny Single, another man in the American League squad, Rod Crew. They used to play baseball in a lot, sandlot adjacent to the stadium, right across the street, and they used to hold up the games and listen to Joe Gargiola give the Yankee scores. You're making that up. No, he told me that. They'd say, hey, in the fifth, get the portable radio out. Who Gargiola says, lead out. That hit him. That hit him, but good. Singleton is on. So Russell gets Singleton with what looked like a breaking ball, a slider. An American League squad getting taped up and massaged and mass. The trainers were before the game. Gene Monahan had a, he's the Yankee trainer, had a lot of work. He's got some more place. now. Jimmy Rice. Made it happen, but Rice was there off the end of the bat, a base hit. Singleton stops at second. That was a pitch similar to the one Rice missed earlier, a sweeping curveball outside. This time he stuck with it off the end of the bat, but he's so darn strong. So Singleton is on at second. Jim Rice is on at first. There's one man out, and Butch Weiniger is the batter. Weiniger singled the right and scored in the seventh inning. 
National League seven, American League three. It's the strike. Billy Martin doesn't have a whole lot of players left. There's Thurman Munson, who's been hurt, Jason Thompson of the Tigers, Wayne Gross of Oakland, and Jim Slayton, the only pitcher he's got left, the Milwaukee Brewers. One ball and one strike. Smash, Martinez has it. Templeton, one out, back to first, double play, 3-6-3, and Martinez really flips that ball around. Inning is over at the end of eight complete innings. National League 7, American League 3. Here's that inning-ending double play. Weiner hits a smash. Look how smooth Willie Martinez is. And then watch Templeton. With Rice bearing down, he just goes right after him and gets him down. And Willie's got time to get back. He puts it on a little bit, but he can play. Willie did a little dance there for the fans. It's high. Ball one to Simmons. Hot smash. Nettles at third hazard. One out. And that brings up Manny Trio of the Chicago Cubs. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, Campaneris, Nettles, and George Scott will be the three hitters for the American League. Trio takes the strike. Trio, who got out to that fast start, helping give the Chicago Cubs that early break away from the Eastern Division, has been slumping, but he's still above 300. He started out as a catcher, as a 16 year old catcher in the Phillies organization. Show you how much he's improved. Herman Franks has sat him down a little bit the last couple of weeks to rest him, get him back on the beam. <laughs> Lasorda is chasing everything. <laughs> Old Tom. This is new for him this year. He was a Dodger third base coach under Alston for a number of years, but he's sitting in the dugout. Inside. One ball, two strikes, one out. Nobody on. We're in the top of the ninth. And there is another one. 17 strikeouts. Most strikeouts in the nine inning All Star game, 20 in the 1968 game. But the game you might remember as we look at downtown New York City from the blimp. But the game you might remember was the 1967 All Star game where there were 30 strikeouts in a 15 inning ball game. Willie Montanez. Watch him handle that bat. One strike. Yeah. Bouncing ball to Randolph. Should do it. Three up and three. He has saved probably his hardest thrower on his staff for the last Rich Gossett to the Pirates, and he's put a new catcher. John Stern, this is the hand for Stern to the Mets. New battery, Gossett and Stern. There are no runs in either the bottom of the eighth or the top of the ninth. Former American League fireman Rich Gossett heats up his smoke for the critical bottom of the ninth. Well, the fans voted the players in by record numbers and third base. The American League has to get something going. We're in the bottom of the ninth, and Gossett delivers. Strike one. Pete Rose, who's played four different positions in the All-Star game, third base, second base, left field, and right field. One ball and one strike. Outside, two balls and a strike. There's Rose. Four different positions in an all-star game. There are several others who've done that. You know, the goose, Rich Gossett, is no surprise to American League hitters. They know he's coming with fastballs. He misses three balls and a strike. Campanaris takes a look at Alex Grammis. He's got to believe he'll be taking this pitch. He's got to get base runners. Taken all the way. It's a strike. Three balls, two strikes. 
We mentioned some of the players, or all the players that Billy Martin had left. Well, the Master League has not yet used Griffey, Andujar from Houston, Steve Carlton, Phillies, or Candelaria from Pittsburgh. They're all experiencing some minor injuries. And Sparky doesn't want to take a chance with them. 3-2 pitch. Ball four. Ooh. Campanaris draws the walk. The Rangers' Campanaris had struck out in the busy seventh. But this time he coaches a walk. Greg Nettles. Nettles was safe on the air by Templeton back in that seventh inning. 1-1 one, one pitch. Low and it's called two. Two balls in the strike. Campanaris at first. Got under it. Everybody chasing it near the stand. It'll be out of play. Struck him out. Gossage gets the strikeout. That was a pretty good heater right there. We've seen some hard throwers come into this ball game. Eckersley and Kern from Cleveland. Oh, gossip. Lavelle was throwing the ball, and it was really popping. Here is George Scott. 17 strikeouts in the game. Nine by the American Leaguers, eight by the National League pitchers. Big breaking run in Fenway. They hit it 420 feet. One center. ball, one strike. Two balls and one strike. Whoops. Laid off. Three balls and a strike. Deep to right center field. Way back there. This ball could be out of here. It is. And for once, a Yankee Stadium crowd roars for a Red Sox hero. The boomer, mammoth George Scott, certainly has the tools. He looks for his pitch, and he gets it all the way. A two-run blast. And now it's 7-5. to five. The six-time Gold Glove winner keeps everyone nailed to their seats. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Bouncing ball, Templeton, a big hop. In time, two away. Thurman Munson. Right one, he had a good cut at it. Oh, he chased a bad ball. He couldn't have hit that with another time this year. 331 official at bats. Foul out of play. He put on a short. One ball, two strikes. The National League. Went around, says Kunkel. Strike out. The game is over. And the National League, the winner 7-5 over the American League. The winner is Don Sutton. The loser is Jim Palmer. Last year was National League 7 to 1 over the American League. This year 7 to 5 over the American League. It's the sixth National League win in a row, 14 in the last 15 years, Tony. Well, Don Sutton was the guy. He shut the American League out for the first threes unscored upon in the All Star game history. There's the guy, Don Sutton, who pitched three strong innings leading off this game. He won the most valuable player presented by the Commissioner of Baseball. It was Palmer who got hit early and hard. So that's the story and the final score again here at Yankee Stadium National League 7 the American League 5. So from beautiful Yankee Stadium this is Joe Garagiola saying so long for Tony Kubek from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx New York. 1977's Galaxy of Stars twinkled brightly on a summer night this week in Yankee Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen the National League All Stars lined up against the American League All-Stars for baseball's 48th All-Star game. The stars of today were joined in the festivities with some stars of yesterday. 
Willie Mays, honorary captain of the National League squad, still a king in New York, as is the captain of the American League, the Yankee Clipper, Jolton Joe DiMaggio. Ovations for times past that cannot be forgotten. But the highest tribute of the evening belonged to Mrs. Rachel Robinson, widow of the immortal Jackie Robinson, who 30 years ago courageously broke the color barrier alone while also providing the fans of Brooklyn and the nation with more baseball excitement than they ever dreamed possible. Mrs. Robinson throws out the first pitch with style and grace. It's a perfect strike. But Jim Palmer, the American League starter, has trouble with his pitches from the beginning. Joe Morgan leading off, tees off. And it's out of here. And the National League blitz is underway. Palmer facing Dave Parker. And Parker lines a hit the left field. George Foster hammers one to left center. Yastrzemski plays the relay to Burleson. And here you see Parker turning third, steaming for home. The throw, and he's safe at the plate. That's two across against the Oriole ace. But now here comes Greg Lazinski looking for more. Palmer ready. He delivers, and the bull blasts. It's going, going, and it's gone. And Jackson has to turn away again. Four runs in in the first inning. The third inning. And the American League still not out of the fire. Palmer pitches. Steve Garvey unloads. It's going to deep left field. And look at that long drive. Garvey's homer gave his team a 5 to nothing lead. The National League was in the groove while the American League looked like they were in for a long night. Rod Carew up at bat. He tries to get things going. A drive to deep center. But now watch George Foster play this beautifully. Right to the wall. And he hauls it down for a 417 foot out. Dennis Eckersley pitching now for the American League. Five to nothing National League. Joe Morgan slams another one to deep right center. But Fred Lynn gets into the act with a great catch. The American League had to start turning things around sometime. And maybe that helped. Once again, Rod Carew, top boat getter of the All-Stars, tries to get things going. Tom Seaver now on the mound for the National League, delivers, and so does Carew. A base hit. Tom had entered with an ovation from the New York fans, but the cheers turned to the American League when Richie Zisk lined this one with two men on. Carew scores, and Fred Lynn follows to make it 5-2 to National League. Jumping now to the bottom of the ninth inning. Score, 7-3. to three. Rich Gossage ready to deliver to George Scott with a man on. Scott drives it to the opposite field, high and deep, and it is out of sight. That makes it 7-5. to five. And Like we said, the all-star story is generally a power story. Manager Sparky Anderson wants to make sure there won't be any more of that from the American League. And so with two out, Thurman Munson comes up to pinch hit, and Rich Gossage puts him away with the game's 18th strikeout. The National League keeps its winning streak alive. Gossage gets the save. Dodger Don Sutton gets the win and the MVP award for pitching three scoreless innings. An exciting show for baseball fans everywhere on a summer night when all of the stars came out to play. Gossage gets Randolph on a hopper to short. Just one precious out left. Now it's all up to six-time All-Star Thurman Munson pinch hitting for fellow Yankee Sparky Lyle to keep it going. The count, ball one, strike two. Strike three. And Bill Kunkel is sure of it. Well, the tough call that I have to end the ball game was Munson's half swing. He went after the ball, and the bat came around, and he tried to catch up to it with his body possibly blocking me out. And I had him. I rung him up. Rich Gossage accepts congratulations from his happy teammates. 
And Bill Kunkel ends a night he'll always treasure. To watch all of these ball players of this caliber in one ball game, if I wasn't working, I would have been sitting in the stands. I don't care if it would have been in the upper deck behind a foul pole. I would have been there to watch the ball game myself. The most valuable player award goes to winning pitcher Don Sutton. Commissioner Kuhn does the honors for the happy Dodger and his proud wife, Pat. The 48th All-Star Game is history, but like all these mid-season classics, the melody lingers on. A theme that wed the Steve Garvey long ball with the first All-Star homer hit by the immortal Babe Ruth 44 years ago. That blends Don Sutton's performance with that of Carl Hubble, who once struck out Ruth, Gary, Fox, Simmons, and Cronin all in a row. The drama of a Reggie Jackson suggests a Ted Williams, charismatic, menacing with portside power. Rod Carew glides into a past golden with the remembered grace of a Stan Musial, a Charlie Geringer, a Willie May. Dave Parker's sculptured brain conjures up the complete player, the all-around giants of yesteryear, a Jackie Robinson, a Roberto Clemente, an Al Kaline, a Joe DiMaggio. A kaleidoscope of evergreen memory. And the dynamic power of Greg Luzinski mirrors a host of past game breakers. Lou Gehry, Jimmy Fox, Henry Aaron, Mickey Mantle. With tomorrow's legends playing today, it's a timeless tableau of frozen splendor.